Welcome to the TK Show with the Athletic Bay Area's Editor-in-Chief, Tim Kawakami. Everybody, it's Tim Kawakami here with the TK Show. Really good to have you on and really good to have on as my guest, special guest, uh, someone who I just love talking to, fascinating every single time, uh, the A's Executive Vice President, Billy Bean. Billy, how are you doing today? A good, Tim. Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, congratulations Thank on everything you. you guys are up to. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so no, it's, it's been a while. Well, we do this about uh, every time the cicada appears, right? <laughs> uh, it's been a couple of years, I think, since we've done one. At so least, yeah, it's, something it's, like it's, that. It's, something like that. But uh, it should be more. Uh, let's, do, let's do this more often. But first, Billy, i got to ask you, the, you know, there, there was the, the news of the Peralta Board, uh, tr- Board of Trustees, voting to, to end discussions with the A's on, on that Laney College site. I know it's not your thing. Uh, you're, you're running the baseball operations, but so much is impacted by this. Uh, what, what was your reaction to it? Were you as stunned as everyone else seemed to be in the, in the franchise uh, by this seeming break off of, of any discussions? Well, well yeah, you know, it's, uh, I was actually driving into the office with, and uh, I was on the phone with David Forrest, the general manager here, and we're having our usual morning uh, call on the way in, getting ready for the day, and he actually sent the news, or he told me the news, and, you know, at the time, I was completely unaware of, of a meeting, so, uh, you know, so the idea that, you know, I, and that was just the initial news, we really didn't have much information other than that's what they had voted on, I didn't really, really comprehend the impact of it at the time. You know, my immediate thoughts, you know, went to... Uh, you know, you know, obviously the team, but my immediate thought went, uh, thoughts went to you know uh, Dave Cavill, president, yep. who's been working so hard and putting so much time into this thing. And and again, you know, at first it really didn't dawn on me what the impact was, but uh, uh, I, I think I'll quote Dave because I had a chance to spend some time with Dave during the, uh, the very day, and he sort of felt like he got hit by a two by four. Hmm. So uh, so so yeah. So again, you know, having gone through this very you know, uh, uh, you know the, the long process that you know we've been going through. Uh, I probably, you know, I, I sort of curb my enthusiasm until you know, you know, probably until we actually start laying bricks. Uh, so I've been, I'm very patient, but uh, but I know, you know some days then it was just uh, again sort of a body blow and and a surprise to him, and and so I was disappointed for all the work he's put into it, and and uh, and right now, really, you know, what I think what what, what everyone's doing is just sort of kind of regrouping here for a second because and again i'll quote dave you know there wasn't a at the time there wasn't a plan b yeah. so uh, uh but i know dave right now is uh he, he's a very uh energetic guy so i know since uh the news he's probably had a million things going through his mind and uh he'll consult with uh you know ownership and john fisher and, and see what happens next but right now everybody's just kind of mentally recovering a little bit so much of the discussion was to get this timetable going so that, you know, you, you and baseball operations could know in four years and five years there would be the stadium, six years, whenever that was going to be. Uh, you can count the clock, start going backwards, and you can just figure out what your payroll situation was going to be. Uh, and, and we realize how important that could be, especially for, for the A's. What do you have to think now? Like, you know, you were vocal saying, okay, we're going to start building towards this opening. Uh, do you have to say, okay, we're maybe not going to be having an opening, and that changes the way you, you arrange your payroll? No, it's a, and a, very, a very fair question, especially, you know, since we're getting ready to head down to the winter meetings. Yep. And, you know, listen, initially we had a, you know, very, you know, quick conversation. And, you know, right now our plan is to go forward with what uh, we had stated last year, that we were – really intent on rebuilding with young players and, and we're going to continue to, to do that. And, you know, I don't necessarily see that changing. Uh, it's possible. It could, if there's any other news or anything else, but I think right now it's, uh, the road we're going to go down. We think that's the smart thing, regardless of, uh, any news that we just received. Uh, and, and again, we, listen, we still need a stadium man. and and knowing Dave, as I said, his mind is going a million miles an hour trying to figure out some solution. And, uh, you know, who knows, uh, maybe this, uh, you know, somewhere down the road creates a, a solution that comes quicker, uh, than, than maybe what we had before. So we're going to continue, uh, with the young players. But, you know, the good thing is, is that, you know, we're pretty excited about some of these young players. So, 
Uh, I think this is our best option and our best long-term option, you know, regardless of, of, of what happens even going forward. So, uh, uh, so yeah, we're going to go business as usual and, and stay with the plan. Does it personally hit you, Billy? I mean, you've waited so long for this. You've been, you're not usually a patient guy, but you've been really patient about this, 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 this you know, setting the, the, the franchise up for the stadium, which was going to be in Fremont and San Jose and then wherever. Just personally, Billy, is this a gut shot just because you've waited and you maybe thought this was going to be the answer? Uh, you know, I wouldn't, listen, I'm, uh, you always have to be prepared. I mean, listen, put it, it's a very complicated process, and it's uh, and I and I knew that going in. So you're going to expect some speed bumps along the way. So I, I wouldn't quite call it a body blow, uh, given my experience in the game, and and again the complications that go into putting together a sports venue, particularly in California. So uh, you know, for me, it was just uh, you know, uh, again, you know, you just you sort of take a breath and you try and figure out a solution, and and uh, and like I said, Dave, that's. That's today's role right now as far as the venue is concerned. And from my end, you know, it's uh, kind of what we've been dealing with for the last 20 years. So I'm, I'm somewhat used to it and a little battle tough when it comes to it. And and I was sort of able to mentally move on pretty quickly. And, and, and like I said, with David next to me, he's been through the same thing. So uh, we just, hey, let's just do what we do and, and we'll deal with the stadium as uh, the information comes to us. Uh, as you mentioned, the winter meeting starting, I guess, Sunday night or, or Monday morning, uh, in, right around there in Orlando. Uh, I, I know I should never ask you whether or not you're going to trade somebody because obviously it's whatever the situation is. But Chris Davis, his name is, has come up. Is, do you imagine you're, you're going to hold on to Chris Davis through this offseason or is that something that you're just going to listen? No, I, you know what? I'll probably be a little more candid than I normally would. Yeah, mainly. I mean, listen. We just traded Ryan Hill. We had we we want to get Chris into a situation where he's DHing more. Uh, a, you know, uh, first of all, uh, you know, moving him right now. And, and I, I re- actually just woke up this morning to some of that speculation. And and, and I can tell you, we absolutely positively plan on uh, having Chris next year. And one of the reasons, again, that we moved Ryan was uh, to give Chris the opportunity to DH. So to turn around and move Chris, I don't think would uh, would be a good. Uh, a good step for us. I mean, with the guys, what hit close to forty plus homers yep. his first two years with us, uh, he's still a relatively young guy. He's he's durable, a good guy in the clubhouse, and you know, with the young hitters around him, Olson Chapman, it's important to have somebody like that as part of their uh, development. So, uh, yeah, we have no intention of uh, shopping Chris. Uh, we haven't. In, I mean, again, I'm being more candid than I yeah. usually would be, and I'll sort of tell you where we stand. <laughs> Is that we fully anticipate Chris being in our lineup next year, and uh, and are happy that that's the case. So, uh, but this is the time people speculate. And listen, we don't necessarily have a particularly great track record of holding on to our players, so it's a perfectly reasonable question. Uh, but uh, but we again we anticipate Chris will be there and uh, have no intention of uh, shopping his uh, his skills at the winter meeting. We well, really do look at your roster, Billy, and there I, I don't see a ton to do. You you, you sign Petit for the bullpen. Uh, do you see things that you need to do, or is this just more kind of a information gathering situation for for you in these winter meetings? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm glad you said that, Tim. And it seems a little bit uh, ridiculous that uh, I mean, Liz, we're excited when we first say we were very excited about the group of players that came up the second half of the season. I mean, they played really well. In fact, uh, close to 500. I think if you look at the point when Chapman came up and had a great September. Uh, and but you know the fact is we came in last place and and but we do kind of feel the way you do if it's like uh, you know we don't have a lot to do and it mainly is because we do have a lot of young players who are going to be back we also have a group of second a second group of players over the next year that you're going to see come up as well uh, and so we're, we're listen there are some you know maybe one or two spot we would like to. Like to have a right-handed hidden outfielder. I think we've been pretty public about that. And uh, and beyond that, you're always. I mean, ever, listen. Every all 30 teams, you can pretty much check the box of everyone's looking for you know extra bullpen. In our case, we you know left-handed reliever certainly would uh, probably fit. But we don't necessarily think we're going to be overly active uh, in terms of having a lot of conversations on a lot of players because we're pretty specific about what we want or who we want and and what we need. And, and right now, with, again, with the group of young players coming up behind the group that just came up, uh, we feel pretty good about sort of just giving, uh, giving a, a little bit of time and letting these guys come in. So, uh, 
so the shorter answer is, is uh, you know, we there, there is a, a player or two that we do are, are focused on. Uh, but beyond that, it's not a long list. By the way, if you're hearing the music in the background, I've already told Billy, we're in the lobby of the Courtyard Marriott down in Oakland, so there is some music playing in the background, and we're just kind of we're kind of grooving to it right now, and it's just good conversational music. Uh, one player that, that, that you were in on, like everyone should have been on, Shohei Otani, uh, apparently just agreed with, with the Angels Billy, in your division, dropped right into your division. Does that surprise you at all, Billy? You know, it, it didn't surprise me that he ended up in the division so much. I was sort of leaning towards the Mariners. Yep. Uh, I was surprised it was the Angels. And literally within five minutes of, you know, everybody getting that announcement, uh, Bob Melton uh, called me and he goes, he said, do you realize that every major free agent since I've been here goes to the ALS? <laughs> and it seems like that, that, that's the case. And uh, I was surprised. I actually, I, I, I kind of, you know, I thought maybe the Mariners and in a Dark Horse Club, I kind of thought the Padres. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know it sounds as a surprise too, but but I, I actually I was gonna you know sort of wage wage you some money on it. I, I would have thought the Mariners, uh, but as it turned out, they surprised everybody, and it was the Angels. And and uh, I guess we'll find out later what was the the reason as to why he signed there. But uh, it doesn't make it any easier on us, that's for sure. How did you evaluate him, Billy? What did you see him as a, as a pitcher first, or, or is he somebody you would have realistic you can realistically see playing both ways? Uh, yeah, no, it was, uh, it, yeah, he, I mean, he's a pretty special talent and, uh, he's really, you know, arguably the best hitter in Japan and, and the best pitcher. I mean, you, you have a guy who, uh, who's had, I, I believe had exit velocities off his, off the bat of over a hundred and he throws over a hundred. I don't know that anybody can say that in the game. So, uh, it's going to be interesting how they, uh, they use him, particularly after days when he pitches. But I think that they probably, like every team, view that as a good problem. And uh, and listen, you know what? From a macro standpoint, and this is great for baseball. I mean, the, the game is becoming so diverse, and there's so many great young players coming in. And to have one of the world's best players now entering the major leagues, I mean, it, that ultimately is a good thing. It makes it you know more difficult on us. Uh, but it will be exciting for fans to come watch this guy play. And it's, again, it's great for Major League Baseball. And the more international the game becomes, the better it is for everyone. Do you expect maybe the log jam to free up a little bit? I, mean, I guess the stand thing still isn't done. Uh, but do you expect maybe a stand thing to happen pretty soon and maybe some moves just around the game to start? You know, we've just seen a, very, a real lack of any major movement so far. Yeah, it's, it's, this no doubt has been the slowest winter that I can remember. I think part of it was the World Series went so long. It went into November. It went seven games. Uh, and the GM meetings and the winter meetings were pretty close to each other. The GM meetings were actually later this year. Uh, you have some unique uh, player situations like you had with Otani, which there's no doubt that that uh, helped some people up. And then you, the unique thing about the Stanton thing is, is that the player himself has complete control whether he goes anywhere. And so uh, I do think that's having an impact uh, for sure on what's going on. You know, as you would imagine, you know, with uh, players of that town, a lot of the large market teams, I would assume, are interested in them. And sometimes this game works from the top down. You know, the, the large market teams, uh, you know, will start to do their business and it kind of trickles down uh, from there. But uh, it's definitely been a slow winner. I do think that, Again, the, once the stand thing is cleared out, but who's to say when it's going to? Because the player is going to decide where he wants to go. Uh, but I do think people in the winning meetings will really uh, start to be very, very active. And so I would anticipate a lot of the winter action to happen there starting uh, this weekend. Do you think Stanton ends up with the Dodgers? Oof. Uh, man. Gosh, I don't, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, I, again, I... I read all the stuff that you read too, and it looked like it was uh, the Cardinals and the Giants, and now it sounds like maybe not. So, uh, man, I wouldn't even want to guess. But if, if I and I do believe what Ken Rosenthal reads, right? And if I, and, and, and what so he, do I. I guess he reported, yeah, as we all should. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, but I believe Ken reported the two teams: the Cubs, the Yankees, Dodgers, and the Astros. So. Uh, you know, listen, the, the player has control, and so I, my, my best guess is going to be one of those as far as handicap and dodging, hard to say. But, but, but uh, under Bob Melvin theory, though, however, he will go to the Astros. There you go. There you go. It's got to be AL West. I was going to, he's going to end up with the Angels somehow. We're just going to load everybody up on that. Oh, one yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, 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 
exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, he's a marvelous talent, and uh, and you know, to his credit, I mean, he structured that contract so he's a, he'd be in this type of position, so nobody should fault him for it. Hey, one thing I like asking people, Billy, what, the winter meetings are so, this kind of this mysterious entity to a lot of fans. I've been to one of them. Uh, they're very different than than I thought they were going to be. It's kind of you know teams in their suites and agents kind of running from suite to suite, and some team going to another. What's your what's your what could you tell people who haven't been to the winter meetings? What what are they like for you? Uh, are, are they enjoyable? Are they tiresome? What are winter meetings like for you? Well, I, I found over the years I found uh, a, a very workable situation for myself personally. I can tell you they've really evolved. When I first started. You know, back to us, went back and you know the first winter meetings I went to when Sandy and Tony were all here in 1990. It was the year after I stopped playing, and uh, and it was a very very different. And all the things you just mentioned happened. You literally would split up all the teams, eat, like you, you'd give six teams to each sort of member of your staff, and you'd go search those uh, representatives out on the team. You'd get information on your six teams. You'd come back to the suite. There'd be nothing but junk food and popcorn balls. Uh, a few empty beer cans, although we were a pretty clean living group there in Oakland with Sandy at the top, and uh, so we didn't have a whole lot of, of you know, the alcohol really wasn't a part of our environment as much, but certainly junk food was. And uh, we'd all be sitting around the suite, and we'd go late into the night, and it was literally the most unhealthy ex- experience you could imagine. That being said, there was a lot of baseball talk. There was a lot of communication verbally. And uh, that's the way it, it, it happened then. And uh, But over the years, it evolved. And then it became, as you know, it, it's become uh, very media-centric. And, uh, you know, all the media is there. You started to have more and more demands from a media standpoint. Uh, agents use it as, were using it as a time to sort of shop their, uh, their free agents. And it got to the point where it was very difficult to sort of just move around and interact with people. So people started hiding out in their rooms. And uh, just because they were sort of avoiding the crowds and everything that was going on, I certainly did. And uh, now, I mean, at the electronic age, a lot of teams could would not have to go to the lobby. I say teams, GMs, things like that. They, they could communicate vis-a-vis text uh, and email. And so you really didn't, if you were in the lobby, you, you didn't really see the GMs that often. Uh, and I actually took it to another level because I'm not a, I don't stay up late. And I kind of got tired of staying up in the suite watching us stare at each other. And the room started to smell like a, you know, a bunch of guys in newspaper. <laughs> and, uh, so my, my first move was to give David the suite. I would get a regular room because I used to always go to bed early. And, uh, and then, you know, finally, I, you know, what I actually found, we get a team suite. I actually usually stay off site. I get up in the morning and have a, uh, a normal breakfast and a workout and get over to the suite and normal working hours and I leave at a normal time and it actually I found that that has been hey, much healthier and uh, I kind of save my uh, I keep my sanity and actually get more done in fact uh, Dan O'Dowd just sort of jumped on, on that uh, idea of mine a few years ago mm-hmm. and we were staying at a, a hotel just five minutes away at the Waldorf a few years ago and we actually got the Brett Anderson deal done at a nice breakfast with nobody around <laughs> Yeah, which could have never happened. Know. Yeah, I didn't uh, know that. That's yeah, great. I, I remember one time when I was in winter meetings, and, and 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 I was there, and I'm not exactly. I'm famous for getting food all over my shirt, so this goes back to my. And it still happens today, right? And uh, and I was in the uh, restaurant eating breakfast with the guys. And this was at a time when I was still. Uh, this was at a time when I was still staying at the, the hotel where the winter meetings were were held. And and I had I had eaten an over easy egg and the yolk was dripping down my chin and I looked over and these, these Japanese photographers were taking <laughs> pictures of me <laughs> and I literally got yolk which is not unusual for me yes. trust me yes. uh, I mean you could pretty you can pretty much get that picture anytime <laughs> but uh, but it was very much it was very much a, everything was very public and it was very public scene and uh, and now again uh, I found something that works very well for me and, and mainly because once it gets past about 9.30 or 10, I start getting really cranky and crabby. And, I, and so uh, I don't like staying up really late and just talking about nothing. So we're, we're pretty much an early morning group uh, with the A's, and we're not real late night when it comes to that stuff. But there are some clubs and good friends of mine that I've been in the same with for years who literally will stay up the entire time. I saw I saw Kevin Towers hosting the meeting one time and literally have the same outfit on the next day. <laughs> <laughs> 
when we got back the next morning for some meetings, it was pretty funny. But because some guys will just uh, they they stay up all night, and that's just you know more of their style. So, uh, but it's still a lot of fun, even as long as I've been doing this. Uh, I enjoy it. I it's it's good for the game, and it's good to see some people that maybe only see once a year. Yeah. Your way sounds entirely too sane. You said sanity. Yeah, it t- seems way too sane. It's 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 classic. Uh, do something that works for you and not the way that everyone else has done. I, I like it. I like well, you know, it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny. Last year, uh, and I've been doing this for years. So I, what I usually when we check. I check. I like usually arrive, and I'll go right to the hotel because where the suite is. And last year, so I, I leave, you know, normal time, and I'm standing in line at the, uh, at another, at, at, it was actually at the Ritz Carlton in D.C., and then I'm standing in line, and Joe Torrey kind of walks in beside me, and I turn around, and he was checking in, too. Hmm. And he looked at me, he goes, he goes, oh, you you figured this out, too. And I, said, yeah, I figured this out long ago. <laughs> and we had the whole workout room to ourselves the next morning, and and uh, and so I figure if, if it's a good idea for Joe Torrey, it's a good idea not, for me, not too. Not terrible. Hey, I always like to bring up something off the beaten path with you because you're you're such an inquisitive mind. I'll, it's not that much off the beaten path, but I just have the Browns uh, fired Sashi Brown. Uh, your guy Paul Diabatesta is there. There's this s- s- miniature celebration by people saying, "Oh, they've shown that analytics doesn't work in the NFL." Uh, you have any <laughs> thoughts about this? Uh, we've talked a little bit about this. I mean. It, 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 are you seeing some things in in football that maybe you went through a little bit in the early days of what you were you were doing in in baseball? Yo, yo, no doubt. I mean, listen. Anytime something you know is, is new and it's again uh, it, it, when you have a traditional way of doing things, you're always going to get some resistance. I mean, that's just part of any business. Period. And it should be expected for anybody embarking on something new. And so, uh, uh, you know, listen. Paul's one of my closest friends. Uh, you know, I talk to him quite a bit i follow the browns uh you know because of paul uh obviously and you know as i always say this when people ask me about paul no matter what if i was starting a software company which is scary by the way uh, but uh, <laughs> but if i was starting a software company he'd be one of the first people uh people i'd hire he's a brilliant brilliant guy and you know as far as sort of the resistance listen any plan interrupted very, very rarely works and uh and I think, you know, listen, I, again, I'm a little bit biased, but, uh, you know, listen, and this is true in any sports. One of the things that I most admire about what the Houston Astros just did was what Jeff Lunau did was he had a very specific plan as to what they were going to do. He had a long-term plan. They were disciplined. At no point did they waver. And the great thing about the whole thing and the execution was that the, the ownership completely backed them the whole time. And, and listen, you know, when that's the thing about sports, rebuilding's always a good idea during the winter when you're not playing games. But when you're playing, and, and I've explained this even internally here, you know, when you use the word rebuild, it, you know, uh, in the off season and you're collecting prospects, everyone's high-fiving each other. But when you're playing a game, particularly in baseball, every single get day, and you're losing every day, it's you have to be very, very disciplined and stay with what you set out and you have to be prepared for the pain and it's not that easy and so and that's true with any sport so i mean listen i i have to have a lot of confidence in anything paul uh involves himself with and at some point that's going to be a very very good football team and uh mainly again i'm biased but uh i'm looking forward to that day and i think some of the things that you know certainly sashi was the gm and i don't know sashi but uh Anyone that's uh, working next to Paul, I, I uh, w- would assume, is a very, very bright person. So I would say some of the decisions that have been made the last two years are, are going to really benefit that club down the road. They got a lot of draft picks, that's for sure. They are loaded with the draft picks in the ne- uh, next two seasons. All right, Billy, the question I ask you, I think I've asked you this before, but I'll, I'll ask you again. We'll get, we'll get a second-level Billy Bean answer on this one. Billy, what's your favorite restaurant? Well, you know, I, well, first off, I live in Danville, so I, I've got a couple there. Uh, me and my wife's one of our longtime favorite restaurants, Cafe Essen, over there in Danville. Uh, we've been going there for years, and they're always very gracious to us. And of course, we we like eat at like five thirty, like 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 Red Lobster couple. And uh, and uh, I'm listen. I eat early, and that's like the big running joke in the office here. If we have dinner reservations, uh, business for me, the optimal time to eat dinner is five thirty, which yeah. for my young guys is like breakfast for them. Yeah. <laughs> 
But uh, but we we all have been going to Cafe Essen for years. There's some great restaurants in Danville. I, there's, there used to be a great Indian restaurant. Unfortunately, there's no longer there called Chutney's. But I also have a side restaurant that I literally will eat there three times a week. In fact, I had it for lunch, and it's a, uh, a Mediterranean. It's uh, called Sultan Kebab, which I, uh, I I literally will pop in there three days a week to get get takeout. But we're we're big fans of Cafe Essen. Me and my wife and family. All good, Billy. That sounds something like I might want to eat right now. But uh, we'll 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 end with that, Billy. Always great to have you. We will we will do this again. I guarantee you. Whatever company I'm at, uh, we'll we'll figure out a way to do this. I'm pretty sure I'll still be at the Athletic, though. So we'll we'll yeah, line it yeah, up. Yeah, no, yeah. Continued success, Tim. This is great, and you got a great great staff there. Uh, and so you know, like I said, I wouldn't expect anything less. So next time around, we you know we we got to talk something other than baseball. Yeah, we'll you know? do. Oh, I mean, we yes. talked a little football today. We got to get a little more diverse. We got. I mean, we, uh, so, there's, there's that Premier League uh, cricket, right? Are you still into that? We have, yeah. Oh, there's yeah, into all that stuff. And, yeah. and you got to understand this, uh, the, the correlation. The, the great thing about watching you know European soccer is oh, it's on really early, yeah. and and I like to get up early. And so uh, it fits with my day, you know. And uh, that in college football, I'll, I'll never get tired of college football. We're entering the bowl season, so I'm looking forward to the next few weeks. I, I, you're just basically saying I screwed it up, and we could have been talking about all these other things. But uh, we will do that next time. And uh, oh, and, and yeah, I've told Billy this already. We will. Uh, we have a, a A's beat writer to announce next week. Uh, and we're very excited about that too so uh, that's a little tease and uh, that's our conversation with Billy Billy I really appreciate it thanks a lot you bet Tim and congratulations again thanks a lot though